In this video, we are going to be covering what's going on in the NFT market, some of the hottest NFT mints happening right now, as well as some of the biggest flops in NFT history. Now, before we go ahead and get started, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications because we are still out here grinding NFT content. And let's go ahead and dive right in. So as of today, it seems like crypto and all the alternative coins are pumping quite a bit. So when we're looking at Bitcoin, it's 18,000 right now. And let's go ahead and go into a Ethereum. So Ethereum actually is pumping quite a lot to 1.4K. If we kind of see over the past month at the low points, it was at that 1.17 and now it's at 1.4. So why is it pumping in particular right now? Honestly, I'm not really sure, right? There's so many factors that are included into this. And when it even comes to the NFT volume, it seems like a lot of the top projects or exciting projects coming out right now have been pumping as well. So when we're going on to the stats on OpenSea, you can definitely see that Mutant Hound collars are pumping. Mutant Hounds by Novel Lab. Also, we're going to cover that in this video. You see the Yuga ecosystem over here. And so this is going to be an interesting video for today. Now, the first project we're going to talk about is going to be Mutant Hound Callers, Mutant Hounds by Novel Labs. And so who started this? The main guy here is going to be Lior.eth. He has this trippy mega mutant over here, which he paid around 2,000 ETH, which was actually a couple million dollars at that time. So definitely not cheap, right? So he's the founder of Eden Block VC, which is going to be a VC firm in Europe, founded in 2017. He's also the CEO of this company called Messica Holdings, which apparently is one of the largest manufacturers and distributors of diamonds. And this guy was on Forbes 30 under 30 in 2021. So it seems like fairly successful guy, especially in the Web 2 side, now moving into Web 3, right? And so Mutant Cartel, which is one of the projects that this guy founder of, they're calling it like a layer two within the Yuga Labs ecosystem. So it's kind of like a community built on top of Yuga Labs specifically for mutant holders, right? Which is very interesting because this is one way of like building a decentralized brand. And then the other project that they recently just launched is going to be mutant hounds now this is going to be a pfp project basically it's meant for mutant ape holders i minted on this website called fair.xyz which is a new platform for minting right it just makes minting easier so how it works is public mint is 0.25 so not too expensive right 350 dollars last month on december 14th oath holders were able to mint it you know on december 15th mutant apes can mint it out and then they move on to the next stage so the boy apes can mint it after that and then after that yuga and oath holders can mint the rest and then after that it's public mint right so in the end after all this i'm not sure when it finished minting but it minted out right and so they have a full on collection and this is what the art looks like it's kind of interesting because this is the landing page for it and I feel like this Lior guy definitely leveraged his brand, especially as the person that holds like this mega mutant. And that's going to get a lot of people in the ecosystem to be interested, even just purely on that, to be honest, right? So if you minted, you get this collar, which looks like there's a lot of demand. The volume is pretty crazy. And what you have to do is you have to burn this collar and then you're able to actually get the hound. So it's kind of like you got a bored kennel club and you turn it into a mutant that was like super buff. And you just added like all these like laboratory elements to it. That's kind of what I feel it is. Pretty cool. I think it fits the theme of the whole Yuga Labs ecosystem with Ford Ape. They may not be for everybody, but it does match the theme of what they're going for. Now we're going on the mutantdow.com, their website, right? This is the hounds layer. The website, the sound design and everything like that, it's actually pretty good. You can tell they definitely put a lot of effort into this. You go through that process and you retrieve a collar, then you can like burn your thing and, and it goes back to the landing page. So people speculate that this project is really directly connected to Yuga Labs. Also speculated that it's connected to Goblin Town. So if you see one of their tweets is, the pieces are aligning, any move against the king would need new allegiances and promises. And you obviously See, see the goblin over here from Goblin Town and the other goblins as well. There definitely is a lot of hype speculation around this. It's one of the more popular examples or successful examples, you could call it, of uh, someone creating on top of Yuga Labs ecosystem. So for me, you know, I'm curious and following to see how this all goes about. Will this make the mutant apes more valuable? How successful will this project be? And then will people take inspiration from this project and also create their own projects that build on top of mutant apes as well? So it's all really experiment in crypto. For me, it's quite interesting to see what the, the new innovations will be. Now, Speaking of the Yuga Labs ecosystem, recently they launched this trailer where they have this key, right? So if you, Yuga Labs is going to have a upcoming mint coming on January 18th for this key, anybody can play this game. You don't need a board ape. You don't need a mutant ape. It's kind of like this skill based game where you dodge these things. I mean, it's kind of like an easy flash game. You're going to have three weeks to play this game and whoever has the highest score by the end of three weeks are going to get some prizes and then you're going to get the key, right? The interesting thing that I'm thinking about is like for most of these games, if you have three weeks to play, I think a lot of people will probably find a way to cheat in this game and dodge all these things we've seen it with other nft games in the past where they had these contests so i hope they have like these anti-cheat methods to prevent that and then you know they're creating this speculative game of like hey you know you can get the mint pass you're gonna get this key then you're gonna get this thing that which gets you this thing you know it's just a like game after game after game which gets people very interested in the nft space now i'm not saying it's good or bad i'm just saying like that's just how the space kind of runs um and what 
I found particularly interesting was this last part. So basically you can buy power-ups within this game using ApeCoin. So obviously ApeCoin is kind of down because there's not really much use cases for ApeCoin right now because the other side game is not gonna come out for a long time and it's really all speculative. So as you can see, it's like pretty down from all time high, not too down, it's like $4, $5, right? It's interesting, right? It's definitely interesting indeed because you have to really think like if you're gonna spend your time and money to try to win in this game, you're gonna look for a return on investment. And a lot of times this whole crypto world, and NFT world, is all about how much money you can make, not necessarily just collectibles for collectibles sake. So from the current sentiment, the floor price of the board apes and the mutant ape dropped a little bit because anybody can play the game. There's no significant advantage of holding a mutant ape from my understanding based on the information I see on this website. But you know, with every story that uh, they create, it's all about just creating transaction volume, to be honest, right? So it doesn't mean like they have to like keep pumping the floors. They have to just get new people interested in and then just keep like cycling people through. So either way, it gets people talking, gets me talking, you're hearing about it now. And, and that's pretty much the name of the game, attention. So moving outside of blue chips let's talk about some new nfts that were recently kind of a flop so game of thrones recently came out with this nft called game of thrones build your dream a digital collectible experience so basically you buy these cards i mean looking at their website it's a little confusing to kind of understand what this is but each series will have one hero avatar nine resources three story cards once purchased you'll be able to open your box and your avatar and stuff like that okay so you have resources like metal food textiles copable cards can be used for your avatar so you can Go into activities that can earn cards and rewards. So you use your resources to create equipment and then you use those to upgrade your avatars. Is Game of Thrones a program a video game? Interesting, no. Game of Thrones video is the first of its kind digital collectible experience. This is where it doesn't really make sense for me because it's like, it's not a game. You're just collecting these things to upgrade your character and then you actually don't do anything with it probably besides earn more cards. But then it's like, are these worth collecting? When I'm looking at the avatars that they're putting out, this is one of the funniest ones where it's like this guy, like his hands are not really even holding the thing. His hands are way oversized. So I don't even know how that slipped through QA. For Game of Thrones, for the budget they have, I don't know how much budget they have, but for the brand that they have, I feel like they could have done better. If you kind of compare this to like PlayStation 2, it's not bad. But if you compare it to like other products that are coming out, it just doesn't quite make sense because it's like, why would people want to collect this? And then why would they want to have resources to build stuff and continue to build their character? So the mint price was $150. The floor price is 0 0.179, which is 250. You know, technically, if you bought one and you sold it right away, you're actually making money. So that's not too bad. I just feel like it's a missed opportunity to do something that could have made a splash in the Web3 scene and, and really like set a tone and example of like what big IPs can do. But we're still early days. People are still learning and it's not too bad. You know, it's like, it's okay. All right, next project we're gonna talk about is gonna be the Captains, which was one of the most hyped mints for 2023 so far. So the Captains is a 9999 collection by Memeland. The mint price was around one ETH, floor price is about five. So that's a five ETH right now is like $6,600. So that's a pretty big deal actually to do that during a bear market. And we actually have a interview with Ray from Nanigag CEO coming out sometime this month. We're still editing it, but you're gonna get all the inside scoop on like exactly what they're building and how they're thinking about this project. It seems like the main push right now is gonna be this meme coin. So if you kind of look at all the marketing they're pushing out right now. The picture profile they use on their Twitter is the meme coin. They're gonna have the potatoes, right? Rumor has it they're secretly related to meme list, which is the captains, meme, which is the token, MVP, and more. The token's gonna be a really big deal for a lot of people because if you look at like the Yuga Labs ecosystem, ApeCoin was a very big deal where people were making quite a bit of money just selling their ApeCoin. So there's this thing called questing. So you need a captain and then you need a crew of maximum of three potatoes. So maybe you can have one, two, or three. And then that is your team and you're gonna probably have to hold them and stake them in order to get this chest. So that's how they are going to create buy pressure for their assets, which is, you know, it's smart in a way, right? I mean, a lot of people like playing this game. They like speculating. They like to see like, ooh, what's going to happen next? After you get the chest, like what's the next thing after that? There definitely is a game going on here. So if you're interested in playing that game, check out Meme Land. All right, next piece of news that we have is going to be Moonbirds. So Proof XYZ also related to Moonbirds. just signed with United Talent Agency, which is a company that negotiates deals with like celebrities and stars and stuff like that. IP brands with different other brands. They're doing a partnership where they want to take the Moonbirds IP, push it, you know, not just in Web3, but also in Web2, making it into a global brand. So how does it work? You know, when you sign with an agency, they work with you on your behalf to vet, broker, and execute partnerships and expansion opportunities. And then after they met with a few agency, that's the one they signed, right? So maybe in the future, we're going to see Moonbirds and movies and products, maybe the licensing deals, maybe TV shows, you know, who knows what they're going to do, depending on what kind of deals they can strike up and the connections they have. Somewhat bullish for Moonbirds, right? Because if they can definitely expand outside of Web3, it's not just like DGENs and like VCs buying into Moonbirds and stuff like that. 
like that and the average person knows what a moonbird is that definitely will gather more attention for moonbirds and i feel like during a bear market the brands that build during a bear even if they're not getting super like a lot of traction even if they're not getting a lot of volume or making a lot of money just the fact that they laid the foundations they have the connections so that when the interest eventually does pick up in web3 which it probably will there's only going to be a few teams who are positioned to capture all that tension in the beginning and then ride the next wave right so if you're still here during a bear market understand that you know whether you're a project founder you're an individual you're an employee at a company or whatever it is right lay the foundations so that when everything's eventually go up again you will be in the right moment at the right time and then everybody will say oh my god this guy got lucky because he was in so early but the game is really to survive so that you can actually become early one day and so with that said that is everything we got to cover for this video if you enjoyed it make sure to give it a like subscribe turn on notifications and i will see you in the next one